So welcome to our final class. Um, I know it's probably bittersweet for some of us, but um, let's see how much work we can get done. We have a lot of things to cover today. So um, on my screen, you are seeing that we will be doing the January 2019 paper. Then I have to go through, um, last week we looked at the May 2018 paper three, and I did say that we were gonna look at a response as to how we could answer question three. And then we have homework to correct the January 2017 paper. So we have lots of work to do today. So we're gonna begin with the January 2019 paper. And one thing to note here is that you would see a lot of the questions being repeated from the previous past papers. So let's see how well we are um, doing with our studies and remembering the answers for the questions. So the first section, the instructions, um, say each sentence in this section has one underlined word or phrase. Choose the word or phrase that's it, that is closest to opposite in meaning to the underlined word. So in this section, we are trying to find the antonyms because we are looking for the words that are closest to opposite in meaning to the underlined words. So for this section, um, Jola, you would do this section for me. So read the sentence to me and then give me your best answer. So the antonym that suits the underlined word. The disgust actor avoided the press wherever he was on holidays. C? Yes, it is C contacted. Good. Number two. There was a decline in airplane travel after that incident. D? You had D? Yeah. Not D. Mm, a. Good. A increase. Number three. Paul's attitude to visit the cave was one of indifference. B. Ah, not B. No, I didn't know she was on, uh, on school. Miss, I think I did the wrong. The wrong. Jolan, one. This is not the homework we're correcting. This is the classwork. This, uh -huh. this is the January 2019 paper. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, so you guys don't have the answers for this. We're now doing it together. <laughs> oh, well, D? It's not D. A? It's not A. C. But your language, what is the answer now? <laughs> C? Yes, it is the enthusiasm, because if you have feeling indifference, it means that you basically have no feeling towards it. But the opposite of that is enthusiasm. If you are feeling very enthusiastic, then you're very passionate. Number four. Being friendly and helpful is a characteristic of most persons from that area of the country. Um, so we're looking for the opposite. Opposite, um, B? Very good, B, uncommon in. Number five. Many teenagers are even some, and even some parents do not agree with the amount of restrictiveness in today's society. C? Very good, C, permissiveness. Good, so I'm sure you guys would have recognized that some of these questions um, were found in other past papers. So let's move on to the other section. And uh, um, this section is the spelling section. So let me get Anna to do this section. So you have item six to 10. So it says in the following sentences, one of the underlying words may be misspelled. Choose from the three options, A, B, C, the word that is misspelled, or if no word is misspelled, then you choose option D. So Anna, you could begin with number six. Um, after embarrassing his colleague, his conscience bothered him and he eventually apologized. 
Yes, it is, it is C conscience because we have the S missing here between the N and the C. So I did tell you guys that for the word conscience, we should see science in it as well. So con and science. So the S is missing here. Good. Number seven. It is my, it is my privilege to give you some information consider, sorry, concerning proper nutrition. Um, no error. Very good. It is D, no error. There's nothing wrong with the sentence. Good. Number eight. Whenever there is a food crisis, the people always experience shortage, shortages of basic necessities. Hmm. Shortage? No, it's not shortage. Um, is it A? Yes, it is A. How do we spell crisis? Rihanna? C R I S I S, I think. Good. So the E here is supposed to be replaced with an I. Good. Um, and I can continue with number nine. The nurses were allotted separate quarters because of because sorry, because the main building did not have enough room for them. Separated. Sorry, separate. Good. Separate is spelled wrong because um, there's supposed to be an A between the P and the R. And number 10. His intelligence rather, rather than his height was the, the deciding factor of, sorry, factor when considering him for the job. I think it is height is B. Good. The answer is height. Um, the E and the I, they have to switch um, spaces. Very good. Ah, the next section, um, you guys' favorite section that you all hate, um, items 11 to 15. So it says, select the option A, B, C, or D that best describes each of the sentences and mark your choice on the answer sheet. So um, for the options, you could use it once or more than once or not at all. So one thing I want you all to pay particular attention to is on the day for your exam, pay particular attention to what the corresponding letters represent. Because sometimes what the letters represent could change from what you guys usually know. Because uh, when we were doing practice papers, you guys would have seen that A always stands for the one that says it's too wordy, repetitive, or contains redundancies. But in this paper, A means the sentence is acceptable as it stands. B still says um, if the sentence contains a cliche or a misused metaphor. C says the sentence is incorrect grammatically or faulty in diction. And D now means the sentence is too wordy, is repetitive, or contains redundancies. So on the day of the exam, pay particular attention to what the options represent because sometimes the meaning of the letters could change from what you guys um, are accustomed to. So, Rihanna, you would do this section starting with um, number 11. You're going to read the sentence and then tell me what you think is wrong with it. The new disciplinary methods had a positive effect on the student's behavior. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's uh, C. Good. It is C. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> so how did you get C for your answer? <laughs> I don't know. I just guess. Well, you're guessing really good for the exams. But um, but there is something wrong with it. That's why it is C. Anyone knows what it is? Oriana, you can figure it out. Why is it C? C uh, says it is incorrect grammatically a faulty in diction. I'm not so sure why. Anyone wants is to help me? Is it because it's supposed to have apostrophe S and not S apostrophe? No, that's not the error. Disciplinary is spelled wrong. Disciplinary is actually spelled correct, Joanna. 
Anyone else is the error? It is C, we know it is C, but what exactly is wrong with the sentence? Instead of effect, it's supposed to be effect. Yes, very good, Anna. They, you had the wrong word. That's why it is faulty in diction. They put positive affect, but it was supposed to be positive effect. Not affect, but effect. So that's why the answer is C. Number 12. Sell them. Do people declare that they are not the products of the environment? Um, B. Is that B? Um, uh, what about D? There's not D. Well, what about C? Uh, it's not C. <laughs> Good guessing, Rihanna. The answer is actually um, A. There's nothing wrong with the sentence. So it, it is acceptable as it stands. Number 13. The major ran up the street like a house on fire and shouting with all, all the strength he could muster, he could muster sounded the alarm. Um, 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 B. It's not B. And I want you to stop guessing and really look at what the options mean and look at the sentence. So it's not B. There is no cliche or misused metaphor there. So it's not B. D. Very good. It is D. What is wrong with the sentence? We know D says there's two words, the repetitive or contains redundancies. So can you point out to me what's wrong with this sentence? Um, hmm. I'm not so sure. So let me, give, let me help you out. So it says the major ran up the street like a house on fire. So they're telling us how he ran up the street, meaning very quickly. So they're giving us a simile here to tell us that, you know, just as how a house can be quickly engulfed by fire, this is how fast he ran up the street. The repetitiveness is with the second half of the sentence. So it says, shouting with all the strength he could muster sounded the alarm. If you are shouting with all your strength, then you are going to sound an alarm. So this is where the repetitiveness comes in because if once you are shouting with all your strength, you are going to sound an alarm. So they're saying the same thing, but using different words. So it's being repetitive. So that's why number 13 is D. Number 14. If I were the captain of the West Indies cricket team, I will attack the batsman with my fast bowlers immediately after the launch and interval. Um, C? Yes, it is C. What's the error in the sentence? Instead of saying, I will attack, you could say, I would attack? Yes, and, that's the error. It was supposed to be, I would attack the batsman. And number 15. He advanced a step or two to meet his attacker, who suddenly became alarmed and retreated back four or five spaces, um is D? Yes, it is D. The advance is to move forward and then they see a step or two to meet his attacker. So that's like um, being repetitive. That's actually not the repetitiveness. Really? Yeah, retreat that's not his repetitiveness. Retreat, retreat and back. It's retreated back. Yes, because okay, retreat okay. already means to go back. So the repetitiveness was with retreated back. Very good. So the answer for um, 15 was D. So for the next section, um, Jada will do this section. So this section is the usage section. So some of the following sentences are unacceptable because of the inappropriate grammar, idiom, or vocabulary. Some sentences are, are acceptable as they stand. No sentence contains more than one inappropriate element. So you have to select the one underlying part that you feel is inappropriate and choose the corresponding letter. And if you think the sentence is acceptable, then you select D. 
So um, Jada, you will do item 16 to 20. So I want you to read the sentence to me and then tell me what the answer is. Are you hearing us, Jada? Okay, so I know Jada was having problems hearing us, so let's we'll come back to Jada. Um, Joshua, you would do this section for me. So would you be um, reading the sentences for us or you would be typing your answers and you need me to read the sentence for you? Okay, great. So I'll read the response for you. Um, and you will send your answer in the chat for me. So number 16 says the exhibition is expected to be a major attraction, not only for adults, but particular to school children in that area. So what's the error with number 16? So Joshua is saying B, it's not B. Is it Sorry, C? Joshua. Yes, someone is helping you here. The answer is C, because this word is supposed to be particularly, but particularly to school children in that area. Good. Number 17 says, in a house of Mr. Biswas, Naipaul shows that how a man may struggle against great odds to achieve those things that he most desires. So what's your answer for number 17? So I'm sure you guys have seen this question before. This is a popular one that likes to be repeated. So Joshua is saying C, it's not C. It is A. Yes, because the word that is supposed to be here. The sentence is supposed to read, in a house of Mr. Biswas, Naipaul shows how a man may struggle. So the error is A. Number 18, I believe that if his attitude improves, his general performance will also improve. So what's the answer for number 18? Yes, the answer is D, no error. There's nothing wrong with the sentence. It is correct. Very good. Number 19, Peter have dengue and feels weak, so he is unable to participate in the inter-school games. So Joshua is saying A. Yes, it is A because the subject of the sentence is Peter, so it's supposed to read Peter has dengue. Very good. And number 20, too much students entered the competition. Only one of them was good enough to reach the finals. So what's the error number 20, if there are any errors? So it's not D, no error. There is an error with the sentence. Let me see if you guys remember usage rules. Yes, it is A. 
We use much for uncountable nouns, so things that we can't count. In this case, we could count students, so instead of using much, we have to use many. So the sentence was supposed to read, too many students entered the competition. So the error for number 20 was A. Very good, thank you, Joshua. Um, Jada, are you able to hear us now? I know that you just signed in. Yeah, miss. Okay, great. So you would do items 21 to 25. So it says each sentence has either one or two words missing. So you have to choose from the four options, the word or pair of words, which best completes the meaning of the sentence. So number 21. Some persons, although health conscious, are usually something to diseases. A? It's not A. So look at it again. It says, some persons, although they are health conscious, they are unusually something to something diseases. So they're saying, despite them being healthy, they are unusually something to something diseases. C? Yes, it is C. They are unusually susceptible to infectious diseases. Good. Number 22. Most parents do not something in discipline from their children. A. Very good. A. Tolerate. Number 23. This period requires us to radically restructure the econ econ economy to something it from what was basically a colonial economy to a modern balanced and something funny. So this is a long sentence. So we, just try to understand what this sentence is saying. So it says that no, we have to radically restructure the economy from something. So from what it basically was, a colonial economy to a modern balance and something economy. So think of colonial times, uh, slavery, how the economy was, and what should the economy be now? C? Not C. Then B? Yes, the answer is B. We have to transform it from what it was um, to a more diversified one. Good. Number 24. The lawyer gave his client some good something about taxes. A. Very good. Good advice. And number 25. The helper had worked all day, so she was something the task of preparing supper. B. It's not B. Just remember, the person worked all day, so now for supper time, she was what? B? No. A? a? Yes, it is A, that she was relieved of the task of preparing supper. So because she worked all day, she was relieved of the task, so she didn't have to do it anymore. Very good. Thank you, Jada. Um, the next section is where we're getting into the poetry. So we have items 26 to 30. Um, have you guys ever seen this poem before? It says read the following poem carefully and then answer the items based on what is stated or implied. Have you guys ever seen this poem before? Anyone ever saw this poem before? So let's see what the poem is telling us about. So it's entitled Accounting. So we know that accounting has to do with figures and money. So it says, night too warm for TV, we're flung outdoors to the porch. So imagine the place is making hot. So you have no choice but to go on the porch, right? Citronella candles sent in the space between us. So when do we use citronella candles? Anyone yeah, knows when we use like session of candles? Mostly evening time, like the night. Yeah, but, but what do we use it for? Like, that's like for like for mosquitoes and stuff. Very good. We use it for mosquitoes to get rid of mosquitoes and insects, right? So it's the night time, and because they are outdoors on the porch, they have the citronella candles. 
Then it says all faces are glowing gold lights. So the light from the candles reflected on their faces. She crowds the card table with coin banks. So who is this she? She has coin banks. So this is what? How old do you think this person is? If they have a coin bank. Who usually has coin banks? Do you guys have coin banks? Anyone here still has a coin bank? So coin banks are usually something that kids have, right? So just from seeing that she crowds the card table with coin banks, we could get the, um, the sense that this person is probably a child because she has a coin bank and this is something that you guys have when you are young. So she has a coin bank and abacus. Anyone knows what's an abacus? I'm sure you guys had this when you all were much younger. Let me find an image for you all about what an abacus is. So this is an abacus. So I'm sure you guys probably had this before. Um, a lot of kids use this when they're learning to count uh, where you all pass the, use the knobs on the abacus to count and so on. So this is something that kids have, right? Because you won't really see um, adults using an abacus. If you wanna teach children math or how to, or how to count, um, count, an abacus is something that, um, that we use. So, um, so the child, she crossed the card table with coin banks and abacus, five and $10 rolling paper or tiny ledger. So we know that she comes outside on the card table with her coins and stuff, right? So it says, I count, line the coins in neat rows, the abacus clicking out our width. So they coin, so they are counting their coins and they're using the abacus to keep track as to how many coins they have. How much can we save a stack up against the seasons? winter coming. So they're really trying to count on their money to see how much they can save because what? They are preparing for winter. Her tightly braided hair turning white, her hands quick, filling the paper casings like homemade sausage. So they're telling us, they're describing for us how the paper casings are looking. They're saying that it's like homemade sausage. So this is what she's putting the money in. She's putting this in a paper case that is um, cylindrical in shape like a homemade sausage. There's money in the bank downtown, but this will keep at home. So yes, they, they, they know that, they, that their family has money in the bank, but you know, sometimes persons like to keep money at home. And where are they gonna keep the money? Buried in jars, we need the house, the crawl space filling up, packed solid as any foundation. So a crawl space is usually, literally, a small place and can fit underneath there, right? So these kids, they are hiding the money beneath the house. So, you know, sometimes when persons build homes, they leave a bit of a space between the ground and the house or and the house is, uh, is, um, is on stilts. So there's a crawl space that you could literally crawl into. So the child would be going there to bury the, um, the money underneath there, right? So that's the hiding spot. So let's see if we could understand based on the questions what this poem is about. So 26 says the activity described in the poem is what? So what activity is being described in the poem here? Anyone knows the answer? Feel free to comment or um, say your answer. See? What activity is being described? It's B. Yes, it is B. They are counting money. Very good. 27 says, which of the following words best describes she in the poem? So remember, she is the one who um, had the coins, who um, brought all the abacus. So if you had to describe her, she, what would you describe her as? Anyone knows what we would describe her as?
Julas saying, A, yes, it is thrifty because if someone is thrifty, it means that they're very careful with money, they are resourceful, and they're not going to waste it, right? And we know that she was very careful with her money because what? She said that they would be saving it because winter is coming and they want to stack up against the season. Line um, number 20, it says line three of the poem is an example of what? So let's look at line three of the poem. It says, such another candle sent in this space. Based on the options here, line three of the poem is an example of what? Such another candle sent in this space. That's an example of what? Anna, what's the answer? Such another candle sent in this space, line three. It's an example of what device here? It's not B assonance. Just remember, assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds that are found within words. So it's not assonance. It's not the euphemism because euphemism is a more is a polite or a mild way of saying something that is rude or harsh. Like instead of saying someone died, you say that they kicked the bucket. So it's not euphemism. It is C. Yes, it is C alliteration because we remember that alliteration is a repetition of initial consonant sounds. And in this line, we have two sets of consonants being repeated as the first letter. So we have citronella candles, we have the C, and then we have sent in the space, we have the S. So line three is an example of alliteration where we have the consonants C and S that begins the words. These consonants are being repeated. So the answer for 28 is C alliteration. 29 says the comparison between the paper casings and homemade sausage is a reference to what? So why was this comparison made to show us what? Rihanna. E. Very good. It was to show us A, the shape. And uh, number 30, the crawl space in line 19 most likely refers to what? Jada, the crawl space that they're referring to. C. Very good. It is C, an area under the house. So this poem was pretty straightforward, right? Right, so the next section um, is a comprehension. So it says, read the following extract carefully and then answer items 41 to 46 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So this comprehension um, is something that could spark a lot of um, discussion or argument because it's entitled, Who Does What? So let me read the comprehension for you guys and let's see if we could understand what the writer is saying here. So remember, we're talking about who does what. And in terms of who does what, we're talking about jobs. So for instance, um, if a job is a male's job or a woman's job. So we're going to see what this passage is saying about that. Because we know that a lot of persons in society, you know, they argue about people saying that, you know, only women are allowed to do this or men are allowed to do this. And then how society thinks if a person does a job that is not typical of their gender. So let's see what the, um, what the passage says. It says, it is quite outmoded today to label certain work as being suitable for only men or women. For example, we see men and women working in dressmaking, cooking, hairdressing, the law, and a variety of other jobs. Men work in heavy industries, which call for physical strength, but apart from those, both men and women have shown equal aptitudes in a wide range of occupations. Many men like pottering about the home and indeed would do more in the home and enjoy it if public opinion had not ordained that most work in the home is a woman's work. There has been established a curious code of behavior regarding men's and women's jobs. A man can work in a cafe wash up and clean the floor, but he would be doing a woman's job if he did the same work in his own home. 
he can lay the table in a restaurant, but apparently his whole personality changes when he passes through his own front door, for then he and his sons are considered incapable of laying a table, filling a salt cellar, or washing a, tea a teacup. He can make beds clean and provide morning tea in a sleeping car on a train, but has no appetite for those simple jobs in his own home. In the army, within a week, he has accustomed himself to making a bed, lighting a fire, and pressing his clothes. But after discharge, he is treated as incapable of turning a mattress or giving a hand with the washing or ironing. Similarly, women all over the country decorate their own homes, distempering and painting in a highly efficient manner, yet wielding the paintbrush in the decorating business is considered a man's job. It is a mystery to me how painting became the complete monopoly of men. The deafness and skill which women now have shown in other trades seem particularly suited to painting. Now, I can't imagine how, if the painting trade had been monopolized by women workers, the same quite irrational attitude would have been adopted and for no other reason than custom, men would have sought work in that field. Today, with so much mechanization and automation round the corner, we shall have to reorientate. The woman in the home does a manual job which saps her physical energy. We may soon find that a man's job outside the home calls for less physical energy than the one done by his wife in the home. What is woman's work and what is man's work should be determined solely by the aptitude of the individual and it is in the interest of the family and the country that this new approach be adopted. So what are your viewpoints on this um, passage? The writer did conclude by saying that you know what, we should, we should label a man's work and a woman's work based on their aptitude. And your aptitude is your natural ability to do something. So then, so naturally, some women are good doing physical strenuous jobs, and then naturally, some men are really good at decorating or cleaning, right? So they're saying that you know we shouldn't label jobs based on okay, this is a man's job and a woman's job. We should um, let persons do whatever they want to do based on their aptitude, so their natural ability to do something. So if they if naturally they're good at it, they should do it regardless of what society um says. So did y'all enjoy this passage? Anybody agrees or disagrees with anything that's being said here? What about what they said in the second paragraph here about men who um, maybe when they're getting paid for cleaning and mopping and washing the dishes and so on, they do it, but as they reach in the home, it's as if they can't do that. They don't know how to wash a teacup and stuff. So they're basically saying that, you know what, um, as a society, we have um, encouraged the division of labor because we said that this is what, this is for men and this is for women. But they're saying that, you know what, people should just do what, they, what they're naturally good at and what they're able to do. So number 41, it says, which of the following is suggested in the first paragraph of the extract? So based on the first paragraph of the extract, when they were telling us about, you know, everyone is doing basically each other's job, everybody's doing the same thing. What was the first paragraph trying to suggest to us? Anyone knows? What was the first paragraph trying to suggest to us? Rihanna, what was the first paragraph trying to suggest to us? B? Yes, it is B, that men and women are equally able to do many jobs. Very good. Um, number 42, Anna, you would do this one. It says the main intention of paragraph two is to show that what? So in paragraph two, when they were talking about men, how in the world of work they would do the job, but then when they're home, they can't do it. What was um, that paragraph trying to say?
Um, I think it's B. You said B or D? B, as in boy. Yes, the answer is B. A man has contrasting attitudes to similar jobs done at home and at work, yes, because it's showing here how um, contrasting, they mean opposite. So yes, the man has opposite attitudes to so what is done at the job and what is done at home. Good. Number 43, um, Joshua, you would answer this one. It says the main intention of paragraph three is to do what? So let's go at paragraph three. Paragraph three was when they were talking about, um, but similarly with the women all over the country, uh, with the painting. So what was um, paragraph three talking about? Let's look at the option again. So what was the main intention of paragraph three? So Joshua is saying um, B is not B. It's not A. It's D? It's not D, it's actually C. <laughs> to demonstrate the irrationality of decisions regarding a man's and woman's work. Um, 44. Jada, you would do this one. According to paragraph four, lines 22 to 24, mechanization and automation might lead to what? So let's look back at paragraph four, lines 22 to 24. So it says today with so much mechanization and automation around the corner, we shall have to reorientate. The woman in the home does a manual job which saps her physical energy. But we may soon find that a man's job outside the home calls for less physical energy than the one done by his wife in the home. So what do those lines um, say? For 44. Let's see. D? The answer is D. That housewives will be more physically strenuous than men's job outside the home meaning that the job that the woman does in the home, it requires more physical energy and strength than the job that the man does um, outside the home and the everyday day-to-day -day job. 45 says, which of the following devices does the writer mainly use in the passage to present an argument? So Joela, you would do this one. So based on the writing and, and what is being stated here, which of the following does the writer mainly use to present her argument? C. What you said? C. You said C? Yeah. It's not C repetition. Try again. B. It is B contrast because contrast has to show it's showing um, the opposing sides. And that's exactly what she was doing. She kept referring to the man and then the woman and then the man and the woman. So she kept going back and forth showing the opposites. 46, um, and I will do this one. According to the writer, which of the following should determine what is a man's work and what is a woman's work? So in the end, what, which of the following would determine a man's job and a woman's job? What, what in the end did the writer say we should rely on? Is it B? It is B aptitude. Very good. Because remember, in the end, the writer concluded by saying that, you know, we should rely on the aptitude, which is your natural ability to do something. So very good. How y'all taught this, um, this passage was? Was it good? And does this um, speech look familiar? For those of us who did the homework, the January 2017 paper, you would have noticed that this speech was in the paper. Did you all, did you all notice that? Yes, yes. Right. So um, I'm sure that you guys um, 
All right, you have your answers for this. Sir. So it says this page is entitled, He is the Man. So let's see what, um, what they're basically saying about him. It says, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the candidate for Dimsville. He's the man who will make all your dreams come true. He's the man who will fulfill all your wishes. He's a man who will stand by you through thick and thin. Our opponents say that he comes from a foreign country and he is not one of you. I must thank them for their kind comments because that is just what you need, his exposure to a developed world. He is equipped with the best ideas that will create opportunities for you. Don't you need steady jobs? And how about a school like that which the other areas have? Yes, my friends, you need to live like valued citizens, not like oppressed slaves in endless destitution. Your lives are not a journey into the promised land. You wander in a vast wilderness where hostile forces of humanity hound you with relentless cruelty. Your daily bread is sickness and worry, hunger and disease. Your hovels are dens of misery filled with empty hopes and despair. Have you considered the future of the children? Look at this man, the man who will make your dreams come true, the man who will give you your wishes, the man who cares enough to come to your village. So let's look at the, um, the questions. So 47 to 50, um, let me get a volunteer for 47 to 50. Rihanna, we'll do 47 to 50. 47 says the purpose of the speech is to do what? So what was the purpose of that, of that little speech? D. Very good, it is D to persuade the audience to vote for someone. Um, 48 says this speech was most likely given at a what? C. Very good, C, political meeting. 49 says the speaker addresses the audience as you in order to do what? Um, D. Very good, D, make the audience feel he cares about them. And 50, the speaker suggests that because the candidate comes from a foreign country, he will what? C. Very good. Be an advantage to them. Great. Um, Jada, you would do the remainder of the questions from 51 to 54. So 51 says, when the speaker says you need to live like value citizens, he attempts to do what? When he says you need to live like value citizens, what was he trying to do there? Um, C. Not C. D. Very good, it is D. To change the, view, the villagers' view of their lives so that they choose this candidate. 52 says the name Dimsville is suitable for the village because what? So why was the name suitable for the village? Think about how, how villages are named. B. Not B. C. Very good. C. It is named after someone who used to live there. And we see that um, into when we name streets and places in um, society, we name it according to um, persons who used to live there. Very good. 53 says in paragraph one, the speaker repeats the words, he's the man because he wants to do what? So why are these words being repeated? Because he wants to do what? Um, B. Very good. Emphasize the power the candidate possesses. And the last one for you, Jada, 54. Which of the following devices is not used in the speech? A. Excellent. It is a pun. Because we saw the rhetorical questions. We saw the repetition with he's the man. Uh, we saw the metaphor when, when they made reference to the name Dimsville, it referred to someone who used to live there. So the only thing that wasn't used was um, A, the pun. And uh, the next section, we have an advertisement. So items 55 to 60, 
they are based on this advertisement. So yeah, it says read the following advertisement carefully and then answer items 55 to 60 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So I want you guys to look at this ad very closely. So let's see if we can understand what this advertisement is saying. So it says all this information in one small package. So exactly what they say here, they're giving us a visual representation. All this information, and they have the equal sign because there is a question about this. So it says all this information is equal to in this one package. So they made it um, condensed. It's very concise now. So all this information that you would have find in different books, all the information is equivalent to this one guide. So in this one package, you could find all this information. So let's read what the, um, the last half of the advertisement says. It says, discover Asia Land Isle. So we know that they're talking about an island. So that's why they have Isle. We see the coconut tree, people dancing, the taxis, the birds, the seal band, and so on, right? So they're describing for us an island and it sounds as though they're trying to appeal to persons to come and, you know, um, visit this island. So it says, discover Asia Land Isle is the complete country guide compact and portable with information and contacts for everything from accommodation to restaurants to touring. Need to know where to catch a taxi, hear a steel ban, go bird watching or windsurfing. It's all in one convenient place. Discover Asia Land Isle is elegant in its design, colorful and simple to read. Open its pages and be mesmerized. Fall into its wonderland Experience travel like you never have before. Discover Asia Land Isle. Available free at major hotels at La Vista National Airport and online from our website. And you see here, to include the advertisement, they have the website www.discoverasialandisle.com. So here we get the sense that it is a country guide. So they're giving us information about accommodation. So where you can stay, restaurants, where you can eat and touring, even the activities that you could do, right? Like the bird watching and the windsurfing. And it even tells us about the, um, the actual magazine, about, you know what, it, it's very simple to read. If you open the pages, you'll be mesmerized. It says fall into its wonderland, so become engrossed in it and travel like you never have before. And where could you get this guide? You could get it at major hotels, you could get it at the airport, but most, um, but where you would find it and it'll be easily accessible, you could get it from the website. So let's look at the questions. So Jolan, um, you would do the first half, 55 to 57. It says this ad will most likely appeal to who? A. Very good. A, tourists. 55 says the equal sign between the stack of books and the book Discover Asia and Isle suggests that the guide is what? Um, D. Is that D? Yes. It's not D convenient. Think again. D. It is C, compact, because they're saying that all the information has been reduced and condensed and made compact into one single guide. 57 says, the author repeats the words, discover Asia and Isle to do what? So why are these words repeated? Um, A? Not A. C. It's not C. Why does he keep saying discover Asia and I discover, discover, discover? B? The answer is B. Yes, he wants to encourage persons to visit the country. So that's why he keeps saying discover, discover Asia and I because he wants persons to come and visit the country. He wants them to find, he wants them to find us about the country and see the things that are, are being advertised. Fifty. Eight, um, Anna would do this one. The phrase available free suggests that the guide is what? Um, e? That is what? No, wait, sorry. Um, 
uh, C. They said C? Yeah. It's not C, just remember, available free. B. Yeah, so this B is not for sale. So you can't purchase this anywhere, it's available free, so it's not for sale. 59 says, which word in the second paragraph of the ad is used figuratively? So remember, figuratively means that it's not used literally, but there's a higher meaning to it. So let's look back at the second paragraph. So it says, discover Asia Land Isle is elegant in its design, colorful and simple to read. Open its pages and be mesmerized. Fall into its wonderland. This experience travel like you never have before. Discover Asia Land Isle. So which of these words are not meant to be taken literally? Was it fall, open, discover, or experience? Fall. Very good, it was fall because it says fall into its wonderland. So they didn't literally mean, okay, fall into the ground, right? They didn't mean that. So the answer is A, fall. Good, and number 60. Persons can most likely obtain a copy of Discover Asia Land Isle from. So just remember, we're looking at the place that persons can most likely obtain a, a copy of it. What's the answer? D as in doll? Oh yes, it is D. It is D, the website because that's where most persons could access and acquire the copy. They did say you could get it at the hotel, but remember to be at a hotel, only a certain group of persons would be going to the hotel. So in order to, um, for persons to most likely get the copy of it, it's readily available on the um, website. So what did you guys think about this paper? What did what do you guys think about this paper? So Anna is saying it was okay. Uh-huh, the rest of you all, how did you all find this paper was? I don't was it a lot simpler than the other papers? Yeah. Okay, great. So remember last week, I just want to refer to, um, to this paper from last week. Do you guys remember that last week we looked at the May 2018 paper three? Just to refresh your minds what this paper was about. Do you guys remember what this paper was about? So remember, we had the article from the newspaper with the farmers one focus on the environment, where they were talking about the government has to be concerned about climate change, and they were addressing the Ministry of Agriculture, telling them that, you know, we need sufficient sponsorship. And then they were saying that, you know, greater focus needs to be on agriculture, but particularly small farmers. And then it went on to say that, um, you know, we need to spend more time investing in the youths because they are the ones starting bushfires because the youths, you know, they're not really concerned about the environment. And it went on to say that a, next, a beef farmer, Tom Drakes, he mentioned that, you know what, in order to fix the current situation, we need to replant trees and, um, because of urbanization with the removal of trees and the construction of housing settlements. Now, um, you know, the environment has been affected and we need to have uh, some sort of replanting project, some forestation taking place where we would replant trees. So that was the first text. Text two was the song by Joni Mitchell, The Big Yellow Taxi. So in this song, she was talking about how they paved paradise and put up the parking lot. So how they destroyed the environment and constructed, and constructed the hotel with the boutique. The second verse of the song was talking about now the same trees that they removed, um, they're placed in a museum and now you have to pay to go see the trees. The third verse, she was um, basically targeting the farmers, talking about their practices with the DDT, the um, insecticide that's harmful to the plants and humans and the environment. 
And she's telling the farmers, you know, to go the organic way. She wants these spots on her apples to leave the birds and the bees. And then in the second to last verse, she's talking about how, you know, the practices of humans, how it even affects her dad, that he has to leave um, the city because of, you know, because he is of the, he's um, ageable. So it has a negative impact on his health. And then she just goes on to repeat at the end here that, you know, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And she keeps repeating that they paved paradise and they put up a parking lot. So they destroyed the environment and constructed a parking lot. And the third text was a poem by Prosper Sanchez entitled Reflections of the Times. So he was talking about, you know, in the nighttime, how the environment looks, um, what is taking place is masked by the dancing city lights. So things appear to be okay and nice. You see the big fancy houses, uh, um, the rich people, what they have included in their homes is a bit harmful to the environment. And then he goes on to say that um, in the daylight, this is the reality of the situation. The atmosphere has smog in it. It's very heated. Um, the air is stagnant, and he's even describing um, how the streets of traffic filled and the emissions from the vehicles are deadly. And then he concludes his poem by saying that, you know, even the big bright red sun, it rises and sets in polluted breath. And he's talking about, you know, our land is supposed to be so um, pure and sweet like milk and honey, and but now it's tainted by smoke and mirrored gases. And he's saying that, you know, as he reflects about what's taking place, he watches the illusions in the air that the dancing lights create. Because in the nighttime, when you overlook the city, it appears as if everything is just fine. So we did answer um, question one, where they asked us to outline the main issue addressed in each of the three texts. So we did cover that. And then um, part B, when they talked about the appropriateness of the medium. And part C asked for us to choose one language technique and explain its effectiveness. So we did cover this last class. Um, and question two also asked us to talk about the um, differentiation between the written text and the oral presentation, as well as a scenario question where if you had to make the oral presentation three points that you would discuss. And lastly, for C, they talked about um, if you had to present this, think of a group of persons that you would like to make the presentation to, and three features of the group and techniques you would use to keep the group interested. So I did say that I would show you all how you could respond, how, how you could respond to question three. So question three is the open response where um, they basically just looking to test your creativity. So I know some of you all, you think that, okay, you're not creative. And, um, based on what you guys have done so far for question three, everyone is um, a lot comfortable doing an argument because you think that an argument is very easy to just present your idea. So um, the question says, create a response based on one of the issues listed in 1A on page eight. So remember, question 1A, was talking about um, where you had to list the main issue in each of the three texts. So they want you to select one text and select one issue and create a response. So it says you can use drama, poetry, lyrics, or song, or prose. So if you want and um, you like, you enjoy writing plays, maybe you could compose a short play in the, um, in the exam. If you're into poetry, maybe you could create a poem in the exam based on the issue. Or you can even try to compose your own song or even write um, prose, a short story, or you could present an argument. So which one of these um, of the representations are you all um, settled with or which one do you prefer? Anybody prefers drama, poetry, the song, the prose, a short story or an argument? Which one do you guys favor most? Argument. Okay, so Rihanna says argument. The rest of you all, what do you all prefer? Send me your response on the chat so I could know what you guys prefer. 
because remember I want you all to stick with the um with what you're with what you're good at and what is comfortable for you. Just remember the exam is not the time to experiment. So if you have been practicing doing question three as an argument, well then for the exam do that. Don't try to um, write in the exam because you think it's an exam. Don't try to write a play in the exam or try to make up a song in the exam, right? Stick to what you know. And the exam is not the place to be experimenting, right? The time that you guys have now where you all are home and doing revision, this is the time that you all experiment and you can experiment writing a drama, a poetry, a song, a short story, and whichever one feels um, comfortable and whichever one you think that you could have all the main points and the content is really good, then that's the one that you all stick to, right? So Anna is saying that she prefers the argument. Um, Joelle and Joshua and Jada, what do you all prefer for question three? in a short story good um joshua you can't write a letter for this you will actually you'll probably have to write for prose you could write a short story or you could write an argument you can't write a letter so julian is saying that she prefers a short story okay great guys right so i'm gonna show you all um a possible response that you could have done to question 1a so in this response, um, the person wrote a poem about um, the issue in 1A, particularly the text with the farmers and the focus on the environment, right? So remember the farmers, they were talking about sustainability and viability, and they were saying that, you know, because of climate change, a lot of focus should be on the environment. But the farmers were using the platform of the newspaper to talk to the Minister of Agriculture, but particularly the minister, because um, the minister is the one who could um, change the reality of the situation. So when you're writing a poem in the exam, if you guys do decide to write a poem, you have to give a poem a title, right? So in this case, the title of the poem is entitled Dear Mr. Unaffected. So it's entitled Dear Mr. Unaffected to show that, you know, um, the Minister of Agriculture is not really listening to what the um, farmers are saying, what the small farmers are saying. And he appears to be unaffected by the situation. And he is turning a blind eye to climate change and the issues that the local farmers are facing. So it says, climate change is threatening our lives, but you seem to not be so wise. It was easy for us to be deceived in the rally your speech we believed. So here you are addressing the minister, you know, how are ministers elected? to um, general elections, right? So they come, they give speeches in the rallies, but in this case, you're saying that, you know what, um, whatever speech you give, we believed it at that point in time, but now, you know, we feel as though we have been deceived because, you know, they just tell you a lot of things for you that they think you want to hear. So it goes on to say, empty promises and broken dreams, your constituents are just hoping for a gleam. Educated fools are guiding this country. Are you waiting for everyone to just go hungry? Because, you know, sometimes they just give you broken dreams and the empty promises. And the constituents, meaning the persons from the area that he's assigned to, they're waiting for, you know, some hope. Because whoever is guiding the country, they're not paying attention to the issues. And the farmers pay a, a pivotal role in providing food. So it's saying here, suggesting, are you waiting for everyone to go hungry? Then it goes on to say, sometimes I feel we have to do the teaching. Sustainability is what you should be preaching. You can't even get the youths to listen to you. So how are you going to change their view? So remember one of the issues that, were, uh, that was mentioned under um, text one is sustainability. So you would assume that the minister would be preaching sustainability, but now the farmer is saying that, you know what, it appears as if I have to do you the teaching to you and even with the youths, because in that text, they did um, talk about the youths um, starting bushfires and being unconcerned with the environment. So it says, all your focus on is cutting down the trees, which is the urbanization. But have you thought about how you're affecting the bees? Because in the 
in the article, they did mention what the bee farmer had to say, and you know, the bees, um, their hive is um, found on the trees. You said you cared about the environment. However, for such projects you're funding bring such bewilderment. So persons are confused now because the minister appeared to be concerned about the environment, but now they are bewildered because of what is taking place. So it says sponsorship is all we ask, but that even seems to be a task. We the farmers are the future, so help us be the main producer. Because in the in the beginning of the article, the first farmer said that um, sponsorship was something that they really, really needed. Let's do what is right and fight a great fight. I'm tired of all fears falling on deaf ears. So here the farmers, you know, they are frustrated at this point in time because they have been saying something over and over to the minister and he's not really listening, right? Viability should be our end goal. If not, maybe we should return to the polls. Because remember, um, viability and sustainability is what should um, the farmer should be aiming for, everyone. But if the minister can't do that, then maybe we should return to the polls and probably replace him because he's not doing his job, right? Then it says, this is the last time we're begging for an intervention because after this, you would be remembered for your declension. So declension here means like, you know, loss of morality, you know, persons pretend to have morals, but no, you know, they're not really practicing what they're preaching. And then it concludes with the last two lines that says, it had so many things done to her and what she needs now is just one armor. So here it is personified and saying that, you know, so many things, so many negative things has occurred have a kid um, to earth and now she just needs an armor to protect herself. So now we're trying to, you know, focus on the environment and try to protect um, earth. So do you guys think that you all are capable of probably writing a poem in the exam? What, are, what do you guys think? What are your comments, your feedback? Do you guys see how you could use the issues, um, the issues being represented in text one, which was the one with the farmers. And you can create a short little poem while it's in the exam. If you, um, if you are able to do that, then, um, you know, CX will give you a lot of marks, right? Because remember, for this question, it's all about a creative response. And they're just looking to see how you can think outside the box. So if you're able of um, composing a poem in the exam, then you could do so, feel free to do so. Um, if you want to create um, a short story, you can write a short story, make sure it's really exciting and it contains um, all the pertinent information that the text had in it. Um, if you're really good at music, you love music, you like writing songs, maybe you've written a song before, perhaps you could probably compose a song in the exam about the issue. So, or if you think that you're not really so creative and the argument is more comfortable for you, then you do what is comfortable for you, right? Remember, now is the time, so these upcoming weeks that you guys have, now is the time that you all could keep experimenting. So if you want, try to write a drama, try to write a poem, a song, and so on within the weeks as practice, but then in the end, choose the one that you're most comfortable with, right? Choose whichever format you're most comfortable with, but just remember what you're going to be awarded marks for. You're going to be awarded, awarded marks based on your creativity. The content of whatever you're writing needs to encapsulate the message of what the text was about and the issues that were raised in the text. And also you're going to get marks for your word choice and how clear it was written and so on, say grammar, punctuation and so on, right? So do you guys have any questions about um, question three from paper three? Do you all better understand how the question is to be done. Do you all have any questions or comments? No, miss. Okay, great. So we're gonna continue with um, the correction of our homework. You guys had the January 2017 paper to do for homework. How many of you all timed yourselves and you took um, within the allotted time, the hour and a half? Did you all time yourselves? And how long did you all take? Yes, Miss 
So nobody time themselves. Okay, so Anna says she took one hour. Very good. Anna, does that hour include um, checking over as well? So the one hour is with checking over also. Okay, no. Okay, great. So that's a good um, that's a good time frame. Um, did you take one hour because a lot of the questions you saw before? That's why. So that's why it was easy for you to um finish the paper. Yeah. So I realized that um a lot of the questions you guys have probably seen the question before, so that's why it was um pretty simple for us to get through this paper within the hour or hour and 10 minutes, five minutes for the most. So let's start with um, the first section. Okay, so Joshua is back with us. So let's start with the first section. It says each sentence in this section has one underlined word. So you have to choose the word that is closest to opposite in meaning to the underlined word. So um, <clears throat> any volunteers for this section before I nominate someone? Okay, so Anna, you would start us off with this section where you're going to read the sentence and then tell me, um, you're going to find the option that is opposite in meaning to the underlined word. So for this section, we are looking for the antonyms. The manager decided to inform the staff about the complaints received from customers. Um, D? It is D compliments, good. Number two. There was a decline in the airplane travel after the September 11, 2001 attack. Um, a. Very good. A increase. Number three. In these difficult economic times, many organizations retrench workers only, only when absolutely necessary. B. Very good, be employed, because we know retrench means that they are dismissed, so the opposite of that is be employed, good. Um, number four. Miss, what's number two? Number two was A, increase. <coughs> While the employers approve of his work, work habits, they objected to his radical views. D. Very good, D, conventional. And number five. Many teenagers and even some parents do not agree with the amount of restrictiveness in today's society. See? See, permissiveness. Very good. So, um, how many of these five questions you guys have seen before? How many of these five questions you guys have seen before? I'm sure you guys have seen um, a lot of these questions before, if not all the questions before. So let me just go over the answers from one to five for those of you all who, um, who joined um, afterwards. Number one is D, number two A, number three B, number four D, and number five C. So the other section, <laughs> is equivalent sentences. So it says each sentence in this section is followed by four sentences. So you have A, B, C, and D. So you have to choose the sentence nearest in meaning to the original sentence. But first, be sure to read all four sentences before you choose your answer. So you're looking for the sentence that is nearest in meaning to the original sentence. So you are looking for the equivalent sentence. So Rihanna, you would do this section. So you would read the sentence from me and tell me which option is closest in meaning to the original sentence. The lion, the lion which had fallen ill was lying in his den, famished and upon the point of death. C? It's not C. Oh Lord. 
B. It's not B. E. No, the answer is actually D. D? Yeah, the answer is actually D. So it says, the original sentence says the lion which had fallen ill was lying in his den famished. If you are famished, it means that you are extremely hungry and, a point, and upon the point of death. So D is the best answer. So it says the sick lion, which means that he had fallen ill, was lying in his den. We get that from here. Extremely hungry, so famished and on the point of death. So D was the sentence that was nearest in meaning to the original sentence. Um, number seven. John told his parent in no uncertain terms that he was going to university as soon as he left the school. C. Very good. C. Number eight. I, I can't understand why you have done this since you tell me that Mark means a lot to you. D. It's not D. E. e. Very good, it is A. Because if you can't understand, it means that you're puzzled. So A says, since math means a lot to you, the reason for your action is puzzling to me. And that's exactly what the sentence was trying to capture. The person is saying that they don't understand what, the, what, um, what was done, so their action, because since math means a lot to you. So the best response was A. Number nine. Realizing that her suitcase was left on the bus, the woman desperately tried to attack the con to, at to attract the conductor's attention. B? Very good, it is B. And uh, number 10. Much is being done to develop tourism in our country by providing good hotel accommodation and facilities. C? Very good, the answer is C. So thus far, we have completed 10 questions. We did one sixth of the paper. So how many um, you guys have wrong so far? So we're just on the first 10 questions. How many did you get wrong so far? I just have two wrong. Okay, two wrong. Mm -hmm. Two wrong. Two, okay. Seems like everyone is getting two wrong so far. Anyone has all correct thus far? No? So let's move on, David. Leave your sister alone. <laughs> let's move on to the other section, items 11 to 15. So um, this one is the error recognition section. So it says, select like the option A, B, C, O, D that best describes each of the sentences and mark your answer on the sheet. So remember, I told you all to pay attention to what each corresponding letter um, represents. So A, if you think the sentence is acceptable, then you select A. B, if there's a cliche or misused metaphor. C, if you think the sentence is incorrect grammatically or, or faulty in diction. And D, the sentence is too wordy. That is, it is repetitive or contains redundancies. So Jolan, you'll do this section 11 to 15. So although you're gonna give me an answer, I'm still gonna ask you to pinpoint what exactly is wrong with the, um, the sentence. So number 11. There are many who have not considered the need to abstain from alcohol, but abandoning drink for sobriety is, sobriety. Truly, the, sobriety is truly the only option for one who wishes to encourage, engage in healthy lifestyle practices. I have D. The answer is D. So what exactly makes it too wordy, repetitive, or contains redundancies? Um, abstain and abandoning. Okay, very good. When they mention abstain from alcohol, if you're abstaining from alcohol, it means that you are abandoning drinking. And it also means sobriety because sobriety comes from sober. So if you're sober, it means that you're not drinking. So we have a lot of repetitiveness where the same thing is being said in the, um, in the sentence. Good, number 12. He wanted to beg for his old job, but the ship had sailed and 
he had to supply play the hand that was dealt him. Um, C? It's not C. B? It is actually B, yes. Because of the cliches in the sentence. So we have um, that ship had sailed and he had to play the hand that was dealt him. So because of the cliches, the answer for number 12 is B, good. Number 13. To attract more business, the store offered transportation at no expense to the customer. I put A. A? Is yeah. there something wrong with the sentence? Oh, um, is D because attract and more? It's not D. Um, I don't know. C. But you left the answer is C. Good guess. But could you tell me what exactly is wrong with the sentence? The answer is C. So it is either incorrect grammatically or faulty in diction. So what's what's wrong with, with um, number 13? Um, it's not supposed to have more next to business. Yes, it wasn't supposed to have more next to business. Look at this part here, to attract more business. So when do we um, oh. use more and most? We use more and most in the comparative and the superlative form, right? So um, for some ways, you all remember when you all were uh, much younger, you all learned to add ER and EST at the end of words. So like tall, taller, tallest. And when you add the ER, that'll be the comparative form. And when you add the EST, that'll be the superlative form. So you have words like tall, taller, tallest. But there are some words that have three or more syllables where you can't add the ER or the EST. So instead of adding ER and EST to show the comparative and superlative form, we add more and most before them. So for basically long words, so we for words like beautiful, we say beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful. Um, we say like comfortable, we say more comfortable, most comfortable. So um, do we say more business, most business? Do we say business, more business, most business? We don't say that. So the word more is supposed to be excluded from the sentence. So it's supposed to read to attract business. So that's why the error in number 13 is faulty in diction because of the word more. So it's, just, it's not supposed to have the word more. So the answer for number 13 is C. Number 14. If I were a captain of the West Indies cricket team, I will attract the batsman with my fast bowlers immediately after the luncheon interval. C? Yeah, so this C, what's wrong with it? Um, I will should, should have been I would. Yes, I will should have been I would. Um, we saw this in the January 2019 paper that we did um, a while ago, right? So you see how the questions are being repeated here? So the answer is C, um, number 15. From the examination results, it was quite clear that Jones, Ju Joan's work was not up to mark, and so she missed the boot. A? Ah, it's not A. B? What is that? B. It is B. The cliche missed the boat. They're not saying that she literally missed a boat that was going to Tobago or something. When they say missed the boat, they mean that, you know, that... Um, her work wasn't where it's supposed to be, so she wasn't on the same track as everyone else. So the cliche there is Miss Devoe, so the answer for 15 is B. Very good. We have the next section is uh, the uses section. So um, some of the sentences are unacceptable because of the inappropriate grammar, idiom, or vocabulary. So you have to select from the options, either A, B, or C. Or if not, if you think that nothing is wrong with the sentence, then you select D, no error. So um, Nirvana will do this section.
So Nirvana, do you need me to read for you and then you would type the response? Okay, so you will be typing your response. So um, let me read number 16 for you. It says, overcome by fear, I ran past my home without realizing that I had done so. So um, your answer for number 16 is C, had done. Um, that's not the answer. Try again. You're not going to try again? Nirvana? Anybody wants to help? So she's saying A. Yes, the answer is A, ran past. Um, if you look at a ran past, we have ran being the past tense of run, and we have past with the ED, past tense of ED. So we can't mark the past tense two times. If the past tense is already marked on this verb, we can't put the past tense here as well. So it was supposed to be I ran past my home. So the ED is supposed to come out from the word past. So the answer for number 16 is A. Um, number 17, in the house of Mr. Biswas, Naipaul shows that how a man may struggle against great odds to achieve those things that he most desires. So what's your answer for number 17? So um, David is giving me two answers. No, David, for multiple choice, I just want one answer. If you put two answers on the exam paper, if one is correct and the other is wrong, you still get it wrong. <laughs> So, um, Nirvana, what is your response for number 17? It's not D. There is something wrong with this sentence. Yes, Jada? Yes, that was a mistake. Oh, okay. Anna is correct. The answer is E. Um, that how is so just supposed to be how. So it's supposed to read in a house of Mr. Biswas, Naipaul shows how a man may struggle, not that how. So the word that is supposed to be excluded from the sentence. So number 17 is A. Um, number 18, it says, I believe that if his attitude improves, his general performance will also improve. So um, Nirvana, what is the answer for number 18? Very good, it is Dino Era. Number 19, pray, good deeds, and living well with one's neighbors are essential to spiritual health. So the answer is not B. Try again, it's not B. It is a good prayer. Prayer is supposed to be prayer. So prayer, good deeds, and living well. So the error is A, good. And um, number 20, the athletes with the worst performances claim never to have used the dangerous drugs found on their possession. So what's the error for number 20? It's not B. Look at it again. The athletes with the worst performances claim never to have used the dangerous drugs found on their possession. The answer is actually C, not on their possession, but in their possession. So the error was C, on is supposed to be in. So found in their possession. Good. So I'm sure you guys remember this poem. So we have items 21 to 30 based on this poem and the poem is entitled A Bad Day by Cynthia Wilson. So it says, I cannot smile today, nor be pleasant today. I do not like people today and particularly hate children today. Today I'm sad, today I'm mad at everybody and everything. I heard today I can't love today, nor see beauty today. I wish the wind away. No, I can't be happy today. 
I look down the future today and began to die today. So I'm sure you guys remember this poem where Cynthia is just telling us about how, um, and this is a repeat question, yes, David. This question has been in a lot of past papers. So, um, okay, David, you would be doing the answers for this, um, for this poem, since you are really excited because this was a repeat and you better get um, all correct. So again, we're seeing the repeats happening here. So let's look at the question. So David will be answering all the questions on this poem for us. So David, will you be reading the questions or I have to read the questions for you and you will comment the answers? No, miss, I think I think I could read, I'm not sure. Okay, great. So you'll start with number 21, read the question and then tell me the answer. Which of the following is not true of the poet today? Um, I think the answer would have to be B or is it B, man? David, I only want one answer, not two options. Yeah, yeah miss, that, that, I, I was going to say something else, but I'll, I'll hold it back. So your final answer is what? Um, I, I think I think it's B, man. Yes, it is B. She cannot be sad today. Good. Number 22. Which of the following words best describes the poet's mood? Um, is it D? It is D, melancholic, because melancholic means I'm um, sad. Good. Number 23. Um, number 23. The word particularly in line four is nearest meaning to... Uh, Miss, can I just see back? See, um, see line four again, please? Sure. So it says as well before, it says, I do not like people today and particularly hate children today. So um, these are your four options here and they were particularly. Is it C, Miss? It is C, especially. Good. Number 24. Um, number 24, which of the following is an example of alliteration? Um, uh, is it C, Miss? Very good. It is C, wish the wind away. Number 25. Um, the poet repeats the word today for uh, B. Yes, B emphasis. Good. Miss Abada. <laughs> <laughs> that was right, the um, aim, David, was that when you see repeat questions that you're supposed to get all correct. And that will show that you're revising in multiple choice. <laughs> yes, Mr. see, I am revising multiple yes, choice. Yes, very good. Keep it up. Um, number 26. I looked down the feature today in line 14 is an example of, um, is it, is it D? Did you say B or D? I said D, Miss. You said A? I said D, Miss, D. D as in David. Oh, no, it's not D. Um, is it B? Apostrophe is basically like an exclamatory statement, like, oh, wow. So it's not an apostrophe. Oh. Okay, ma'am. So is it B? So it's B metaphor. And we know this by a process of elimination because we know it's not a simile because there's no like was. It's not an onomatopoeia because um, there's no sound words. So it was either between B or D. So, and you guys don't know what is the apostrophe. So the answer was B metaphor because he's comparing two things without using like was. Um, 27. The words no say beauty in line 10 means that the poet cannot. Um, is it D or? Did you get me two answers again? No, miss, no, no, miss. I was going to say, oh, uh, but hold it back, miss. So is it D? Yes, the answer is D. Appreciate anything. Okay, thanks. Um, number 28, the mood of the poem can best be described as C, depressing. Very good, C, depressing. Uh -huh. Number 29, the poet began to die, line 15, probably because... Um, Is it B? No, no, no. Is it? Is it C? 
Very good, and let's see. The future events did not look promising. Um, number 30, the poet's intention to, to, with, um, the poet's intention to, um, okay, um, D? Very good, it is D. Tell us of her unhappy condition. Very good job, David. Um, Miss Abada, you had to give my up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it shows that you're revising your multiple choice questions because what I want for you guys is that when you see um, something being repeated, I want you all to automatically remember the answers because as I told you, all the questions can be the same. So keep revising the questions along with the answers, okay? So we are halfway through the paper. How many do you guys have wrong so far? We are at number 30, so we're halfway there. Let's see how many um, you all have wrong so far. Tell me in the yes, comments yes, how many 10. you all have wrong so far. 10. You have 10? Okay, very good. So you guys are doing pretty good. Okay, okay. So let's look at the other um, section. So this was a comprehension entitled The Sisters. So it says read the following passage carefully and then answer the items 31 to 38 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So let me just reread this passage for you all quickly because this is the first time that we are coming across this passage. So it says, over the years, Marta had sent many warm and friendly messages to Elena, inviting her to visit Elora and assuring her that she'd always be welcome. But her prodigal sister never replied. From time to time, however, traders brought news that Elena's marriage to Iaco had been blessed with two sets of twins that Iaco had succeeded his, father, his father's ruler of kingdom of horses and that their marriage was a stormy one. For a long time, there was no further news until one day, a traveler told Queen Marta that Iaco had been thrown into, had been thrown by a wild horse and had broken his back, that Elena had lost her beauty and her mind, and after shouting night and day that the kingdom of wild horses was an accursed one, she had escaped from keepers. They searched high and low for her, but she had vanished without a trace, the traveler said shaking his head sadly. The queen immediately summoned Leha and ordered her to send search parties to all of the countries bordering on the kingdom of wild horses. Go to the ends of the earth if you have to, but bring my sister back to Elora. Whoever finds her will be amply rewarded, Queen Marta said to the trackers, traders, and interpreters whom Leha had recruited. But after years of futile searching, the search parties returned one by one and reported that they had found no trace of Elena. It's as if your sister has vanished from the face of the earth, Leha said. I hear you, Queen Martha, said, and yet I feel in my bones that she's still alive. Leha had led one of the search parties, and when she returned, her hair was streaked with gray and age and mapped her rough hewn face with lines as delicate as spider webs. The first time that Leha stepped into the audience room to report about her travels to distant places in search of Elena, she was both surprised and pleased to see how Queen Martha had aged. When their eyes made four, the smile on Leha said to herself, it's as if her face had been beaten very gently against the years, for she could see quite clearly how time had changed what was once an ugly countenance into a beautiful one. When a shaft of sunlight touched the cloud of white hair on the queen's head, it became luminous and a welcoming smile lighting up her dark face lifted Leha's spirits and made her heart sing. And somehow all the hardships she had endured traveling across parched savannas, through densely wooded valleys, over mountains and down turbulent rivers were forgotten. So, what was this comprehension passage about? Did you all enjoy this? What was this passage about? Anyone knows what this passage was about? 
Did you guys understand what the, what they were saying here? We know that they are two sisters. Mm -hmm. what, are, what about it? So um, they were saying, yes, it is about the old times because we know that based on how they go and search for persons and the, um, the descriptions and stuff, we know that the stories that, um, you know, um, in the old times, long ago, because they're talking about the horses and the search party. Uh, and we have the queen. What again is happening here? We know Leha works for the queen. Um, the queen's sister is missing because her husband was thrown by the horses and then all of a sudden she just lost it. Then she escaped from the keepers. So the queen now wants to find her sister back. And after years of searching, what happened? They didn't find her, okay? And then Leha came to show, to tell the queen about what happened. And then what we've noticed in the end is that, you know, about how the queen has aged because of how um, long they've been looking for the sister. And the queen has now aged and, you know, Leha is saying that, you know, now the queen has changed by having this beautiful countenance. So let's look at the questions. So for this one, um, Jada, did you do this comprehension? I tried. You tried? Okay. Yeah. So you'll give me some answers. 31 says the style of writing in this extract can best be described as what? Um, B. Very good. B narrative. Good. 32 says, what do the words they marriage with the stormy one imply? D. Very good. D, their marriage was filled with disagreements. 33 says, the instruction go to the ends of the earth in line 12 implies that they should search where? A. Very good. A, every accessible land. And 34, the literary device used in the phrase as delicate as spider webs is a what? C. As delicate as spider webs. It's not C. A. It's not A. It's B. As delicate as spider webs, we have two things being compared. They're using like or as. So in this case, they use the word as when they say as delicate as spider webs. So the answer for 34 was B simile. And thank you, Peter. And 35 to 38, Anna, we'll do this one. So, Anna. The right implies that Leah was. Uh, eh? She wasn't actually a leader, you know. Remember, she was a person that the queen oh, right, was no, wait, Sorry, C. You had C? Yeah, that was her sister, I think. No, the, the queen, um, Queen Martha, her sister was the one who was missing. Well, Leha wasn't oh. the sister. If, um, the queen was always summoning her to do stuff. So then she would have been what? Think of back in the days. Uh, Who would a queen usually servant. summon? Yeah, the answer is B. She was the household servant. Because what, um, the queen summoned her to tell the others to go and organize the search party. So 36 says, which of the following is an example of contrast? So where is the opposite taking place in the phrases? Um, D? D, yes, because it says lighten up the dark face. And uh, we know that's a contrast there when they say light and dark. So yes, for 36, the answer is D. Um, 37 says, um, it mentions the cloud of white here is an example of what? D personification. Very good, it is deep personification. And the last one, the concluding sentence of the extract suggests what? B. What you they had? had given up. They had given up search for Elena. 
Not that one. There was a batanza. D, as in door. Yes, it is D that the problems which Leha had encountered with the search were forgotten. Because remember, in the end, they did say that, you know, they talk about the hardships she endured through the mountains and stuff. All of that um, were forgotten. So the answer for 38 was D. The next comprehension, 39 to 47, um, is another extract. So let's see what it is about. So it's a pretty short extract. It says, when the traditional family unit is discussed, it is usually in terms of the external social changes that are threatening its existence as an institution. Little thought is given to the internal problems of normal homes. The central problem for most family members is, of course, how to get along with each other. This internal matter is not without its external implications for only where there are orderly and peaceful families can there be an orderly and peaceful society. Of all the social changes that have affected the family in recent years, by far the most significant has been the increase in the number of mothers of school-aged children who have taken outside employment. In Canada, some 75% of women in this category now have full-time or part-time jobs. For the most part, economic imperatives have left women no choice but to work for money. An income sufficient to maintain an average family style took one Canadian 48 hours a week to earn in the 1950s. It takes two people 65 to 75 hours a week to earn that income today. The conflicts between work and family life and scarcity of time to devote to children have taken a personal toll on women in the form of stress and depression. Obviously, individuals under stress are harder to deal with than those who are not. So the tensions of work are carried over into tensions in mother-child relationships. Men too report feeling stressed out and squeezed between work and family obligations. Males raised in the tradition of mothers doing everything in the home are inclined to be lax in doing housework and awkward in the unaccustomed role of actively nurturing children. But if a two-income family is to run smoothly and fairly, the household workload must be shared. Another profound change in family relationships lies in the relatively high incidence of divorce and marital separations in Western society. The fact that so many couples feel they must go their separate ways illustrates just how difficult it is for people to live together satisfactorily at the best of times. So what was this comprehension about? What was this passage about? What did you all understand from this passage? Any main points, anything that um, stood out to you guys? So Nirvana is saying Canada. Yes, they did mention Canada at some point in time. Why was that um, example included there? What were they saying about Canada? Yes, they were talking about men and women. Uh-huh. So they are talking about the different lives of men and women. The example they were using with Canada here, they were saying that, you know, long ago in the 1950s, um, the money that you would earn in 48 hours, now two people have to work for it um, in 65 to 75 hours to get that same money, right? And yes, David, they did mention, especially in this paragraph, they were talking about, you know, about work, how it's stressful, and how the woman comes home and carries over that stress and depression into the household. And they said even men reported I'm feeling stressed out as well. And um, because of this, they're saying that, you know, now we have changes in the family structures in that there's a high incidence of divorce and marital separations in the Western society. And they say this happened because, you know, um, couples, they feel as though they need to go their separate ways. Why? Because it's very hard for them to live together satisfactorily. And that's what they said up here, that the central problem for most family members is, of course, how to get along with each other. Because I know even some of you all right now, you're all home in quarantine and some of you all, 
you just wish that you could get out of the house because one of the problems that this um this passage is highlighting is that the modern family now is very hard for family members to get along with each other so this is um the main problem that is um, affecting families so number 39 um rihanna would do this one according to paragraph one which of the following results from conflict between family members c it's not c just remember they're talking about what was stated in paragraph one d it's not D. B. It's actually A, this order in societies. Because if you go back up to um, paragraph one, the main thing they were saying is that um, they said for only where there are orderly and peaceful families can there be orderly and peaceful society. So they were saying that um, the disorder in the society, it really contributes, it results from conflict between family members. So Rihanna, you would do 40 also, according to the extract, all of the following threaten the existence of the family except? B. Very good, B, conflicts between the employers and working parents. Um, 41, the word that is closest in meaning to imperatives is which word? A. Very good. A demands. 42. In paragraph 2, the writer compares income in the 1950s to income today to show what? D. Ah, not D. What was so it's not C. When they were comparing it, they're saying that, you know, long ago, if you work 48 hours, you would get this pay. But now you have to work 65 and 75 hours to get that same pay. E. Yes, it is A. People today work longer hours for the same pay as in the 1950s. Good. 43, according to the writer in paragraph 3, tensions in mother-child relationships can occur because of what? C. Ah, it's not C. Um, D? It's not D. <laughs> so why are there tensions in the mother-child relationships? Because of what? A as an apple. Yes, it is A because the mothers are under stress. Because remember, they were saying that um, the mothers they're stressed out at work and stuff, and even when they come home, the stress the stress transfers into the household and affects the relationship. So the answer is A. Good. And um, Nirvana, you can finish out the rest of the um the responses. Forty four. It says the writer's main purpose is to do what. B as in boy? It's not B. The main purpose. A as in apple? It's not A. Okay, D as in David. Okay, no, it's actually C. Highlight some of the internal problems threatening the, um, the family. <laughs> So the answer for 44 is C. 45, the writer's main intention in lines 15 to 20 is to show that. Nirvana, you're finishing out this comprehension. So you're gonna do from um, until 47. So what's your answer for 45? A as an apple. It's not A. Mm 
Nasa which? Ano kaya? B? B? It's not B. Okay, G, I'll never give up. <laughs> the answer is actually D, the share of the household will put can help a two-income family to run smoothly because in those lines, they did say that the workload must be shared. So they said in order for the, um, the house to run smoothly and for there not to be any problems, the workload in the house must be shared. So the answer for 45 is D. Um, 46. Couples feel they must go their separate ways because of what? B as in boy. Very good. It is B as in boy. So problems with existing agreeably. Good. And 47, the tone of the passage may be best described as what? A as an apple. Yes, it is a analytical because the writer is um, really analyzing <clears throat> The, um, the patterns that um, he has observed with the families from the traditional families to the modern one and what's um, and really getting into some analysis and providing justifications and explanations as to why families are falling apart and why the divorce rates and the separation rates are increasing. So um, it was very analytical because he was providing us with some sort of analysis with regards to the family. So again, we have reached this speech that we saw in the paper that we did just a while ago. This same speech was found in the January 2019 paper. Um, he is the man. So we did establish that um, a candidate was being introduced here. Basically, the writer was saying that, you know, he's the man, this is the person that um, should represent you all and listing why this person is best suited for the job. So, um, Joshua, you will give me the answers for this section. Are you with us, Joshua? Okay, so it appears that Joshua is not with us. So, um, Joanne, you will give me the answers for this section, starting with 48. This speech was most likely given at a what? C. Yes, it is C, political meeting, good. 49 says, in the extract, the writer addresses the audience as you in order to do what? Yes, D, make the audience feel he cares. 50, the speaker suggests that because the candidate comes from a foreign country, he will what? C. C, be an advantage to them, good. 51, when the speaker says you need to live like valued citizens, he attempts to do what? A. What you had? A. It's not A. Um, and he says you need to live like value citizens. What is he trying to say there? Mm -hmm. Is that me? Mm -hmm. It is C, change the villagers way of life because he wants them to change how they are living currently and he wants it to be improved. So you will just answer these last three questions on this. 52 says the name Dimsville is suitable for the village because B. What you have? B. No. B. It is actually C. It is named after someone who used to live there because remember I was telling you all um, how villages are named. So like how do we get street names and the names of villages? They are primarily named after someone who used to live there. 53 says, in paragraph one, the speaker repeats the words, he's the man, because he wants to do what? Mm -hmm. Very good, it is D. He wants to impress upon the audience that he's offering them the best person for the job. So like if you say he's the man or she's the woman, it means that you are telling them that you know this person is the best. 
And 54, which of the following devices is not used in this speech? A. Very good, A pun. So you guys should have remembered this from, um, from the paper that we did, you know, a little while ago. And the last one is an advertisement. So it says, um, we have items 55 to 60. So it says energy efficiency tips. So how we could conserve energy or be efficient when it comes to energy. So number one, it says keep fixtures and bulbs clean. Dirt can absorb as much as 50% of light. Number two says turn off the lights when leaving a room, even if it's only for a few minutes. It's just a myth that it takes more energy to turn a light on than to leave it on. Number three says, use motion sensors for outdoor lights. There are good security measure that doesn't waste energy. Number four says, use lower wattage bulbs. Your lights may be brighter than you need. Five, purchase lamps with dimmer switches as you can lower the settings when less light is required. Six, place floor and table lamps in a corner. This allows light to reflect from the walls, making the room brighter without turning on more lights. And number seven says, use fluorescent lights instead of, instead of incandescent lights. Compact fluorescent lights use up to 75% less energy than incandescent lights for the same amount of light and last up to 10 times longer. So they basically given us some tips in which we could be efficient around the household, things that we could practice in our homes. So any of you guys practice these tips? No one practices these tips? Which one of the tips you practice, David? They are according to numbers. So which number do you practice? Hmm. Oh boy. So it appears that you don't practice any of the um, tips, David. Do you guys turn off the lights when you are leaving our room or you all leave the lights on when you leave in a bedroom or any particular room in your house? Do you guys leave the light on? Okay, great. And do you all practice, you know, placing the lamps on the floor so that, you know, to make the room brighter without having to turn on more lights? Or if you could, um, when you're buying lamps and stuff, use that for people, um, Use um, purchase the lamps with the dimmer switches so you have different options. You can get the, lamp, the light bright or dim, and even using the fluorescent lights instead, like the fluorescent bulbs. So um, let's look at items 55 to 60. So 55 to 60. Um, Anna would do this section, well, 55 to 57, Anna, you would do this one. 55 says the main purpose of this ad is to do what? What's the main purpose of this ad? See? Yes, it is see to better, to encourage better energy use. Good. 56 says, which of the following is the best meaning of the word absorb as used in tip one of the ad? You have A, use up. It's not no, uh, A. D it's not D. B as in boy. B? It's not B, it's actually C, taking. So when they say absorb, they mean taking in this case. And 57, Anna, it says, which of the following practices is recommended? So what is recommended here for you guys to um, practice? D. D, turning off the lights when leaving our room. Good. And to close out this multiple choice, um, Nirvana, you'll do 58 to 60. So 58 says the ad emphasizes that motion sensors are important because they what? B as in boy. Ah, it's not B as in boy.
So what do the motion sensors do? Why do persons have the, the security lights outside with the motion sensors? They do what? They are an apple. Yes, they are efficient and they provide security. Good. Um, 59 says, which of the following statements is not made in the ad? C, as in cat. Does not C. D, as in dog. It's not D, actually. So it's a? not C and it's not D. It is A, a. that lower wattage bulbs use less energy. Good. And 60 says, the information in the ad would be most useful to who? C. Yes, see householders, because all the um, efficiency tips that they're given, they're things for us to practice home. So it would be um, relevant to householders. So put your total out of 60 and comment your, um, your total for me. Let me guys see how, let me see how well you guys did. So very good, Joel and David, good job. Were these marks higher than last week? Very good, Nirvana. Okay, very good. So Joel and says higher than last week, very good. It means that you guys are improving. David says he thinks so. David, did you throw out any marks from last week? Very good, Anna, and very, oh, good job, Rihanna. And um, Jada, and well, we don't know where Joshua um, disappeared to. Very good, Jada. So I'm very proud of you all that, um, that you guys are showing so much improvement, and I'm extremely confident that you all will do well in your exams. So what did you guys think about the multiple choice papers? Do you guys think that you have the hang of it? Yes, so I think by now you guys have the hang of it because you will see that a lot of the questions, they keep repeating um, themselves. So what I want you all to do is that, although this is our last class, uh, I want you all to still practice um, revising your work, right? So for the papers, you guys have the answers and you guys have the blank question papers as well. So what I want you all to do is that in the upcoming weeks, I don't want you all to get too complacent and comfortable and stop revising. I want you all to take back the question papers, the blank papers, sit, do them by yourselves and, then, and time yourself also. And when you are finished, I want you all to revisit the answers and correct it to see how well you are doing. Because remember, you guys, the, the aim is for you all to get total, right? I want that when you are going to the exam, that you guys are um, so confident in what you're doing and you all saw the questions before. So they were saying, are we still doing the e-test this year? Yes, the exams will still be done um, electronically. So um, what from the webinar that CXC um, had last week, they gave us three options. So basically the schools have the option of um, you are doing it, the test electronically, so the e-test, or in instances, because in some countries we don't have laptops for everyone, if that arises, then the exams would have to be written and the um, invigilator would have to manually upload the answers to CXC so that they could correct it. But the exam would still be done as an e-test this year for you guys. And yes, you all are doing just paper one and paper three alone. So paper one, the multiple choice paper, and paper three, the short answer questions. And um, David and Nirvana, I know you guys joined the class late today, but um, for the 2018 paper three, question three, I did send a sample for you guys in case, um, just to show you all, instead of writing an argument or a short story, perhaps you could write a poem about, um, about what the, um, the issue was in question one, because that's what question three was about. 
So do you guys have any questions? So you, you guys do have the e-test. You get them tested on paper one and paper three. Remember the questions come the same. Um, please do keep doing the blank, the blank test and then correcting them for yourselves to see how well you could remember, right? Because multiple choice on paper three is how well you could remember because a lot of the things repeat themselves. And if you guys still have, um, and if you guys still have any questions, uh, we, we're gonna keep the WhatsApp group as well. So if you guys have any questions about anything in the upcoming weeks, uh, you all can feel free to message in the WhatsApp group or you can feel free to WhatsApp me or send me an email. If you want, um, if you're gonna do extra work and you want me to check it also, you could also do that, right? You can still email me or message me. So if you need any assistance from now until your exam, you can feel free to um to message me or email me if you want me to maybe perhaps you're attempting the question three and you want me to check it for you, you could do so, right? So questions. Do you guys have any questions about anything? Please ensure that when you are going to do your exam, even if they say that the exam is done on the computer, still work with your stationery because what CXC said is that um, in the event that there's a power outage, what they would do is that um, you guys may have to do, yeah, if the power is not returning and well, obviously there's no internet access and you can't use your computers, then you guys will have to do a written, you have to do a written version instead. So please, um, although it says that it's an e-test, still work with your stationery on the day in the event that you know that there's a power outage. But I know TNTEC did release a statement saying that they would try their best uh, during the um, CXC exam period because of it being done electronically. They did say that they would be trying their best not to have any power outages during that time. But then you know that we have instances that are, that are, um, that we can't avoid. So like for instance, if there's an accident and someone bounces a post or something and the power goes. So there's some things that, that we can't control, right? So still work with your stationery on the day for your exam, just in case there's a power outage, okay? And please be sure to go on the ministry's website. And what I want to tell you all also is that, that um, during the last couple of weeks, we have seen um, a lot of fake news being circulated about CXE. So what I want you all to pay particular attention to is what you guys learned in argumentative writing that when you are using an example or a reference, the source must be credible. So only pay attention to information that you will see that was published by CXC or the Ministry of Education. Um, if the Ministry of Education or CXC, if they are releasing an official statement, they would use their official letterhead. So don't look at memes or pictures that you know persons edit and stuff. Only look for documents with the official CXC letterhead or the official Ministry of Education letterhead because persons are very idle now. They're making up a lot of fake news. So only take into consideration things that you see being released from CXC on their website or the Ministry of Education and you would see, would see the letterhead. So do y'all have any questions? Any questions about that? And even if um, we're gonna have the WhatsApp group still, we're gonna keep the WhatsApp group until the exams and stuff. So what I want you all to notice is that if, that when CXT releases important information, Lyndon will send it in the group for you guys, right? So don't pay attention to, to things that you see other people sending you, if they send you videos and pictures and stuff. Um, when CXC releases official and accurate information pertaining to the exam, Lyndon will send it in the group for you all. So don't pay attention to other things that you've seen in the group from different persons. Only pay attention to um, what Lyndon would send because he is liaising directly with CXC and the Ministry of Education. So only when something is important and relevant and accurate, he would send it in the group for you guys, right? So um, pay attention and check the group for updates and messages also. And even if you guys need any help with getting your timetables and checking and stuff to see where, uh, which center you have to write your exams at, you can still reach out to Linda and he would be able to direct you and tell you what to do and so on. Right, so um, please use your time wisely and continue revising for your exams. Keep redoing the blank papers 
And um, one thing I want you all to do is that when, when you do get your results, please message me and let me know what you got, right? <laughs> That's the only thing I want you all to do. Please message me and let me know um, how you guys did in the exams. I always look forward to that part. So message me and let me know um, how you guys did in your exam. And use your time wisely. And um, you know, I know you guys would do good and I want to wish everyone all the best in your exams. So don't be nervous, say your prayers and um, you will be just fine. Remember everything that you've learned and prepare yourselves so that you don't have to be nervous or anxious or worried, right? And try to ace it and do the best in your exam. And what I want you